Hi, I'm Zia Scaravella from ZK Research and I'm here for another ZK tour. Uh, I'm in an interesting place today. I'm at the uh, at uh, the Johnson Space Center in Houston and I'm joined by uh, John Alec, VP of Product Management from Cisco. Uh, John, I've done this with Cisco plenty of times before. Yeah. I've done them at Cisco Live, I've done them at customer sites. Never done it at NASA before. First time for everything. Yeah, and so uh, we're going to be looking at something pretty interesting. Uh, I know it was a few months ago now that you announced this joint project called Callisto with Amazon, Lockheed Martin, and, and, and WebEx uh, to, to build a, well, why don't you tell us, what, what was that for? Yeah, so uh, Callisto is a technology demonstration. The purpose here is we want to showcase how commercial technology, the things that you and I may use at home, and see how that can make deep space exploration better. And so what Callisto is, it's actually a unit inside of the Orion spacecraft that has Alexa, it has an iPad running WebEx, and a bunch of these applications that Lockheed Martin's also built to make it a lot easier to understand how the mission's going. And so it's been a roller coaster for sure over the past three years. So it's a way, and, and from what I understand right now, it's, it's been using the Orion capsule, Correct. which is unmanned, but I, the idea is that you can let people in a manned spacecraft actually use WebEx to communicate with people here on Earth. That's right. So yeah. what we're going to be testing in a little bit uh, is WebEx running from here in Houston with the Orion spacecraft, which I think today is about 236, 237,000 miles away. Put that in perspective, it's a 10 year walk for you and I to <laughs> get up there um, and, and showcase, right, that we can handle that kind of distance and latency. Okay, well I know Cisco is big in hybrid work, but uh, you guys have taken this to a, to a whole new level. Work here. from anywhere, yeah, right? Yeah. Isn't that the point of hybrid work? Well, I, I suppose. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't know if work from space, if I've had that discussion, but yeah. yeah. So, that, so the, this poses some interesting challenges, because I know uh, you know, one of the big challenges that came up in the pandemic with remote education, remote healthcare, uh, was the, the poor quality of just rural broadband. Yep. And I'm guessing the bandwidth that you have available here is a lot less than even rural broadband. Like, I mean, if you, you'd be dying to have rural broadband <laughs> yeah. here, right? So, yeah. uh, tell me about some of the technical challenges. How much bandwidth you had to work for, work with? What you know, the latency. Yep. Uh, obviously, when you go into space and back. It's not like going even around the world. Right? No, no. So um, a couple of things. First of all, there's no internet between Houston and Orion. Yeah. We're using the deep space network. There's no cable. Well, no, we don't yeah. have a cable. <laughs> yeah. Two hundred forty thousand miles, right? Imagine yeah. the copper. Yeah. No. So what we actually are using is NASA's deep space network. That's a satellite network with three locations around the world. There's one in Spain, one in California, and one in Australia. And the purpose there is they can keep in touch with spacecraft no matter how far away because the Earth is rotating. And so while they have a lot of bandwidth. We've only been given 128 kilobits. It's 2004 dial-up internet we're talking here, yes. right? And we're taking 2022 video conferencing WebEx and really squishing it down by a factor of 10. Yeah, not 128 meg, 128 kilobits. That's a yeah. K. That's so you're right. talking like a fraction of a T1. Even. That's yeah. right. That's right. And so thanks to a lot of the engineers smarter than I am, <laughs> we've been able to take that signal that we normally send and compress that. Right? We use the AV1 codec, and that's allowed us to enhance even further how and what we send. The second piece, that 235,000 mile distance, introduces a lot of latency. So far with our testing, five to seven seconds is what we've seen. We complain when we see 30 milliseconds yes. normally. We're talking five to seven seconds. And so we've had to enhance how we stitch that signal back together. The audio, the video, as it comes across those fast distances. And so what are you doing there technically? You're actually buffering the content? Yeah, we've changed the timing yeah. that we use and configuration we use for buffering to make that work happen and ultimately be able to handle those distances. Artemis 1 went around the moon. Artemis 2, 3, 4, 5, we're hoping to participate and go all the way up past Mars. Okay, and then, so um, this is a pretty niche use case, uh, but I know Cisco does a lot of niche use cases. Uh, are there, what are the practical applications of this that we could actually use in everyday life for things that you're learning? to do in space. So while space may be a niche application, the reality is is um, low bandwidth, high latency are problems that we hit here on Earth today. So Cisco already works um, on, in certain areas like you mentioned, rural communities. During the pandemic, we had to do remote education. We had to do telehealth. And so the learnings here to handle that five to sec uh, seven second latency or those bandwidth constraints will improve our ability to support those communities on Earth. I think that's one of the most compelling reasons for why we want to participate uh, with Callisto is to not just take our commercial technology and help up there, but take those learnings and make things better down here. Hmm. And have you, uh, what have you learned so far? Um, it's hard. <laughs> it's, no, I mean, joking aside. Well, it is hard. I mean, I mean, even doing low bandwidth is hard, right? Absolutely. Not all vendors can do that. Now that's one of 
the thing Cisco's done well for a long time. Yeah, no, I mean, exactly. That limited bandwidth, it's not a spike and a trough, it's a reality consistently. So that's been a good learning for us. And again, that five to second latency, there's two elements. When you, if I ask you a question over WebEx and you don't respond for a second, did, did you hear me? Did you hear that? Five to seven seconds, you're sitting there waiting. Yeah. And so while we didn't have to solve that today, there's no humans on the other side, how do we signal? Right, and so those are some of the things that we start right. to think about. So you know, everything's working as expected. It's just a 10 second delay to get that response. Yeah, but as long as you're aware of it, then, because there is a point in time where maybe it is too long, Right. but you don't want to be constantly saying every five seconds. Right, did you hear me? Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Exactly, and we actually have our WebEx um, hardware as well, the Cisco boards and the Cisco Desk Pro in these rooms, which hopefully we'll yeah. be able to see in a second. And we've learned a couple things about how that can be used uh, for deep space exploration, instructing astronauts up in space on paths to take on the moon and others. Yeah, so it's interesting that you brought up hardware though, because uh, I know there's been a big focus of software in this industry, and I've always said that, uh, you know, good, uh, uh, you know, good performance is really a combination of hardware, software, and then a lot of times silicon as well. Right, right, right. It, it takes all three to make them work in unison. Yeah. Versus just you couldn't really do this if you're going to do everything with software. Correct. 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 Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Those devices need to be optimized, and and luckily enough, through this project, we also ran this on an iPad. I mentioned that earlier. Yeah. And so our hope is eventually astronauts could have their own iPad. They could be dialing their families, right? And so it yeah. is, but you have to think across all that, the physical device as well as that software and mm -hmm. the underlying network is as we know well. Okay, well I know in another room we have kind of a mock demonstration set up. Uh, should we go in there and have a look? Yeah, let's take a look. Okay, let's go. All right, John. So here uh, we've got a, a WebEx desk here, or a desk pro. That's desk pro, that's right. That's desk pro. And, uh, um, I suppose if in a real uh, situation, and actually we did do some testing a little earlier, and I'll, and I'll make sure that I include pictures of those in the video, uh, but we would have somebody at Mission Control sitting here Correct. communicating with the astronaut, right? So That's they, right. Okay. And so what would, what would the person here see? Yeah, so this desk pro in the actual room is connected through that deep space network we talked about to the Orion spacecraft. Here, if there was a human up um, on Orion, you would see their face and they would see you. The intention is it would work the same as if you and I were meeting in our respective homes. Okay, and then the tie-in with Alexa does what? That's, uh, everyone knows Alexa's, hey Alexa, what's the weather? Right, right. Well, what are some of the commands we might say here? Yeah, so the intention with Alexa in the Callisto technology demonstration is two things. Make it easy to understand what's going on. So one of the commands that we've been testing is, hey Alexa, what's the velocity? What's the internal cabin pressure? Get information, the batteries. Batteries are important. Batteries are what power um, all of these, all these spacecraft. And so that's one class. All oh, right, because it is unmanned too, right? That's so right. The, 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 the capsule has to respond to you, not a person. That's right, that's yeah. right. And this is something, uh, fun fact, it, everything is battery powered. Those solar arrays, that's the only way to recharge those batteries. So it's critical yeah. to know, right, what is that battery status. The other thing that Alexa does is you can do things with Alexa. One of the most popular commands at home is play music with Alexa. Maybe not the most directly applicable to space, but imagine a world where you could take action with that voice control. And that's really what Alexa's role is in some of this. So some use cases I'm thinking as if, if, you're, uh, if you're up in space and you're working in, even in the space station and, you need, and, and you've got gloves on. Right, right. You yes. can't really touch your interface and get things to work. Or, you know, heck, you, I can even see a scenario where you're outside, you know, working on things. You can speak into a microphone. That's so right. Speech is the only access me mechanism you have. That's right. right. Or like you saw earlier, in some of the capsules, you might be on one end of that, and the control is physically on the other. And so, being able to use your voice to command some of that could save you time and floating across that capsule. Okay, so here we've got the Desk Pro, yep. and I know we're going to move over here now. Oh yeah, let's make sure we see this. Yeah, where and so tell me what we're looking at here. This is this is actually John a mock up of what you would actually see in the Orion capsule. Correct? That's right. This is an exact replica of the Callisto unit that's on the Orion spacecraft right now. And so this is off the shelf iPad. It's an off the shelf iPad. An Alexa device. An Alexa device, and it's actually powered because Alexa works in what they call a local mode. It doesn't have internet connectivity, back to the point That's earlier. Right, yeah. So it's getting the information from the sensors and the telemetry systems on Orion directly. So it's a little bit different, so it has that computer behind it. So I couldn't ask it what's the weather in Houston. Um, we're working towards that. We'd love to, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I could ask it what's the weather inside the capsule or the temperature. Yep. What's yeah. the temperature? Absolutely, those kinds of and things. And so if we were connected our desk pro uh, via WebEx, 
the WebEx would appear on the iPad? That's right. So if you can imagine, this is actually the front of the capsule. In a lot of the photos that they're showing, there would the four seats are right here. I'm looking forward at that, and the person's face at the desk pro is going to show this way. Okay, and then so uh, and and uh, and just so you know, people at home can see it, uh, I'll include an image of this. But there's a white ring around the Alexa device, and that works very similar to the home device. That's right. That's right. right. The ring light. Yeah, it lights up to let you know that it recognized a command, and then it processes that locally. Are you over right now? Using Orion's current geodetic latitude and longitude location, Orion Alpha by onboard guidance, navigation, and control software. Orion is currently over South Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, and it's not just um, uh, WebEx integration, or the, the desk phone integration, correct? I know you've got a WebEx yes, board we over do. there with Snoopy on it. Yeah. Uh, and so if we go over here, yep. um, and we played around with this a little bit before, the idea of being able to attach a board to it is, is these people are gonna be in space a long time. That's right, that's right. right. And sometimes, I mean, conceivably, uh, the the next Orion mission uh, is actually to land somebody on the moon. Um, I think the next one goes around the moon, oh. but the one after lands the moon. Yeah, that's right. And so there may be instructions you want to be able to give people. Exactly. And so conceivably, uh, walk me through how you would, the board would interact with people there. Absolutely. So first things first, our goal is that this works the same connected to Orion as it works for you and I when we're in San Jose. But uh, the, the thought here is, a picture is worth a thousand words. Rather than me trying to explain to you, hey, take a left turn here, go there, I can draw that, right? So while we don't have the image here, drawing arrows, showcasing, go here, right? Do this, zoom and focus in. Those oh, yeah. kinds of things makes it so much easier for scientists and experts here on Earth to be able to communicate their intention uh, up, up in space. If you'll allow me, there's actually a really fun anecdote. We just had this conversation. I don't know if folks know where the term square peg round hole comes from, it actually comes from the Apollo 13 mission. During the mission, I, I think most folks know, things didn't go exactly as planned. The crew had to move from one module to the other. And the problem was is, the carbon dioxide scrubbers from one module had a square, uh, square mouth, on the other side had a round receptacle. Square peg, round hole. And they were verbalizing these things back and forth between Houston and, and the spacecraft. Imagine if you could take a photo yeah. literally and say, here's what the problem is, and we can solution together. That picture's worth a thousand words. It's a time saver and potentially a lifesaver. Yeah, well that's awesome. And so the idea here is that the full WebEx experience, uh, boards, devices, mobile client, yep. would be accessible to anybody, anywhere, including Literally space. anywhere, yeah. that's right. Yeah, well, that's awesome. Well, I just have uh, one more question for you. I, I recently attended the WebEx One event and there was a lot of really cool advanced technology yes, coming. Is. So what could be next for this program? Yeah, um, so I'm excited to talk about a couple of things. First of all, uh, things that we take for granted with WebEx, background noise reduction, recognize my voice, right? These things that we think of day in, day out, apply that to astronauts mm -hmm. on the Orion spacecraft. There's background noise, you heard some of it today. Yeah, there's like a lot of background noise. Which is yeah. really cool, by the way, right? The and, hum is cool. And you're all talking in a very concentrated area. That's too. right, yeah. so being able to focus on my voice versus your voice, things like that, again, that we use day in, day out, can make life better once we have astronauts in those tight quarters. Another example, um, speech, language translation. Science happens in every language, and so you may have engineers down here speaking one language, Korean, while the astronaut speaks German, Italian, French, and so that real-time translation is critical. The one that I think is a, and I have to use this very specific term, a very cool potential application, hologram, WebEx hologram. Imagine you're down on the lunar surface in the rover and you're trying to drive some conversation and discovery and exploration with scientists back home. What better way for that scientist to understand what they're looking at than interact with it in 3D mm -hmm. and virtually, right? Though, again, those are all potential things, but I think could really revolutionize how space exploration happens. Yeah, so a lot of those advanced AI features come in uh, that we should, uh, the, the use case for those is almost uh, magnified. That's right. In those difficult to use situations. Absolutely, yeah. that's right. Yeah, well that's excellent then. All right, well John, well thanks for this tour, that was very informative. Yeah. Uh, I look forward to seeing you know what's coming next from WebEx and what's coming with this program. Uh, on behalf of John, I'm Zia Scaravall from ZK Research. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.